Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to the May 2021 CTSS quiz. Hopefully, with the vaccine, we're all getting closer to being back to normal. But here are 10 terrific cases to get you through the month. In this case, I asked the question, what is the most likely diagnosis? And when you look at the images, what do you see? You see the spleen and it's hypodense. It's not enhancing. You can think about what are the possibilities. Splenic abscesses, that's a complication. It could be post whipples, though it'd be pretty rare. But usually it's hypodense lesions within a spleen, not the entire spleen, not enhancing. So that would not be an appearance. Delayed perfusion, well, this is arterial phase. The spleen always enhances early. If you have delayed perfusion, maybe you have no perfusion, like splenic infarction, and it definitely is not a normal postoperative spleen. So this was an excellent example of a splenic infarction. We talk about splenic infarcts being focal or global. This is a global infarct. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with flying pain is, well, what's the key finding? You're seeing a process in the pararenal space posterior lateral in the right kidney. Now it's only there. So then you have to think about what gives you focal processes. Well, extramedullary hematopoiesis and Ehrenheim chest, they can both involve the perirenal space, but it's typically going to be bilateral and it's typically going to be surrounding the entire kidney. So that's not a good choice. Also, this is a little bit too bulky. You could think also about metastasis like melanoma, but that's now one of the choices I gave you. And then it's usually more of a focal process. A perirenal bleed is a consideration, but I don't see any sequela of a biopsy. I don't see changes in the soft tissue. I don't see a defect in the kidney. So although that's possible, that's not the best answer. The best answer is lymphoma. Lymphoma of the kidney can have many appearances, solitary masses, bilateral masses, diffuse infiltration, and peri- and pararenal space involvement. And the best answer in this case was lymphoma. The most likely diagnosis in this 50-ish year old with a palpable mass is, well, what do I see? I see a very large homogeneous soft tissue mass in the abdomen, which is encasing the SMA and really narrowing the vessels. Now, carcinoid tumors involve the mesentery, but with a desmoplastic reaction. Liposarcomas typically displace, not infiltrate. Also, in most liposarcomas, you're going to see some fatty component. I don't see any fatty component here. Desmoid tumors can be solid masses. Desmoplastic reactions can occur with desmoid tumors, but most of the time, desmoid tumors are solitary masses. They can be large, and they typically displace structures. The process that causes infiltration is classically lymphoma. And this was a great example of B-cell lymphoma, large mass in the abdomen, infiltrating and encasing vessels. The best diagnosis in this 25-year-old female is which of the following? Well, what you see is a cystic mass with septations involving the tail of the pancreas. Now, of course, you can consider, am I sure this is pancreas? I'm sure. Now, could this be a pseudocyst of the patient had pancreatitis? We usually don't see septation, so I don't think that's a great answer. Mucinous cystic neoplasms, it's a possibility. They do have septations. Usually they're age 50, but it is female. Cirrhosis adenomas, usually an older patient, but again, a tail is a great location. We have anywhere from oligocystic lesions, which have no septations, to lesions with multiple Swiss cheese patterns, to thin septations, so that would be a thought. But the best answer is probably a SPEN tumor. SPEN can be cystic and solid, can have septations. And the reason it's the best answer is because the patient's 25. SPENs are typically in teenagers or people in their 20s. It's typically females by nine to one. So that indeed is going to be the best answer. The best diagnosis in this patient with history of a stab wound is, well, what do you see here? Well, it's a contrast study you see a large outpouching from the left ventricle. That is a large pseudoaneurysm. Interestingly, by history, this patient had a stab wound, which was fixed. The patient was very lucky, but now came back with chest pain and developed a pseudoaneurysm. So it's not a thrombus, obviously, and it's not a sarcoma. Those are typically filling defects, and myocardial infarction can cause thinning of the ventricle and outpouching, 
But this large outpouching, this dumbbell-shaped lesion, is classic for pseudoaneurysm. This patient was a cat. What I mean by that is this patient had nine lives. This patient had surgery and did well. The least likely diagnosis in this case is which of the following? Well, you see an infiltrating tumor in the patient's small bowel in the ileum. There's an exophytic component. Interestingly, with this large mass, it's not obstructing. This could be metastasis to the small bowel, definite possibility. In fact, this was metastatic Merkel cell tumor. Another possibility is adenocarcinoma, definitely. Adenocarcinomas can be polypoid lesions, diffusely infiltrated, they can be bulky. This can also be lymphoma. Lymphoma is bulky tumors. Lymphoma will be a great thought. Lymphoma infiltrates bowel, but typically doesn't obstruct. The least likely diagnosis is carcinoid tumor. Carcinoids can cause big masses, but they're typically enhancing. Also, they cause desmoplastic reaction in the mesentery. So you might have considered it potentially, but it's surely going to be the least likely diagnosis. The most likely diagnosis in this case, this is a wonderful case. You see paraspinal masses, you see masses in the mesentery. It's large. They're relatively low density. So I truly, when I look quickly, I do think about lymphoma. I think also about testicular cancer. That gives periodic adenopathy, but you know the, the, the findings of the density. Now, testicular cancer typically does give low density, so you would think about it for that reason. But you know the areas adjacent to the kidneys is not a great location. Germ cell tumors, well, as the same as testicular in some sense, large retroperitoneal masses, bulky adenopathy, low CT attenuation. But in this case, what you also notice is the spinal cord is widened. The paraspinal processes are coming from the cord. This was a beautiful example of neurofibromatosis. Typically, you see the paraspinal findings and the bony findings, but you typically don't see those large mesenteric or periodic processes. And in fact, neurofibromatosis, if you don't make the diagnosis, can be confused with lymphoma. Interestingly, in this case, you do not see any neurofibromas in the skin, which can also be a very helpful point in making the correct diagnosis. So a beautiful example of neurofibromatosis. In this patient with back pain, the most likely diagnosis is, you can see a large mass, very nicely shown, displacing the kidney forward. Now, could this be a retroperitoneal bleed? I guess it can but it's almost too well defined for a bleed and it's not high enough CT attenuation. Could this be metastatic melanoma? Melanoma can involve the perirenal space, can grow out, though it's somewhat unusual to be so large and so focal, but it could be, to be honest with you. Lymphoma, as we mentioned, could look like almost anything bulky, good location, that's a possibility. But this was a liposarcoma, the most common retroperitoneal tumor. Again, if you said lymphoma, I, I probably give you half credit. This case I chose because liposarcomas displace the kidney, can involve adjacent structures, can be very bulky, and I wanted to make the point that liposarcomas do not necessarily have fat. If this mass had lots of fatty components, you would have said liposarcoma without thinking. Liposarcomas do not necessarily have fat. So this was a well-differentiated liposarcoma. The most likely diagnosis in this 27-year-old male? Well, what do I see? I see a periodic mass involves the left psoas muscle. It's cystic in part and has calcifications. Could this be lymphoma? Yes, but lymphoma essentially doesn't calcify unless it's been treated typically with radiation. Can it be TB? TB can give you mesenteric nodes. They can be low density. They can have calcification, but I've never seen TB be so bulky. Neurofibromatosis, periodic masses, low attenuation, but this is really a large component in the mesentery. I don't see any of the other changes of neurofibromatosis in the spine or skin, so I would think about that. It's in the differential, but the best diagnosis is a germ cell tumor. 27-year-old, it's a younger patient, it's a male. Those were two helpful hints. Large retroperitoneal masses, often cystic, often containing calcification. This was a germ cell tumor, just a really nice example. 
In this patient with shortness of breath and prior treatment for PE, the best diagnosis is. So you can see I gave you a little bit of help with the question. It's also a bit trickier. When you look quickly, you say this must have a PE, but have you ever seen a PE be this large? And look at the patient's left pulmonary artery. Look how it's encased. This is not a pulmonary embolism. You could think of lymphoma, but the way it infiltrates, it's really almost too much. It's too primary in the pulmonary artery rather than pushing in or directly invading in. Metastatic renal cell can involve the hilum. It could go to pulmonary artery, but this is so bulky. Both pulmonary arteries involved. It's a central process growing out. This was a pulmonary artery sarcoma. And the classic history often is the patients are treated for PE, but they don't get better. Then you look carefully and it's bulkier and it's a primary pulmonary artery sarcoma. So those are 10 absolutely terrific cases. I focused on some of the retroperitoneal processes. I showed you cases from lymphoma to germ cell tumor to neurofibromatosis. I hope you got them right, but most importantly, I hope you learned something. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctss.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.